welcome to the Ladybug Laboratory Podcast. I'm your host, Lily, and today is Monday, July 18th. Um, I'm recording a day later than I usually do um, because yesterday I was out, and I will talk more about that at the very end in the prattle section. Um, but let's get started for today. So today we have a list of segments, and I'm actually renaming some of my segments. And some of these names I've had for quite a while, but I just haven't been saying them. So, um, for my works in progress, we're going to have a work in progress segment. Um, and then a finished object segment, mail call, which is what I've been calling stash acquisitions. Um, as well as an on the table and on the frame, which are things that I've sort of included before, but I'm going to specifically give them their own segments this time. Then at the end, we're going to have a segment on knit-alongs and prattle, which is my new name for what I've just been doing to talk about my own life. Um, the weather here today, it's in the 60s or 70s. Um, it's still morning-ish, so it's more in the 60s, which I really enjoy. I love the slightly cooler weather. Um, I am not a warm weather fan. <laughs> and I find that many people that knit are not warm weather fans. I grew up in New England and I really miss the cold winters. I mean, out here it barely gets below maybe 55. And um, that's just not cold enough as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> but you know, it is what it is. It's going to be about this temperature all year long, so whatever. Uh, last week it was a lot hotter. It was maybe in the 80s. Not a fan. <laughs> um, today I am wearing a cardigan that I have made for myself. A lot of people have asked me why I don't ever wear my own knits and the reason ultimately is because it's too warm. Um, I wear them more in the winter but even so I don't wear them a lot which is really unfortunate. It's just because it's so hot here. So this is um, the very first sweater that I ever made myself. It's got these wooden buttons which I got at an antique button store. It's got four of them, five of them, and it's just a really basic cardigan. I use the custom fit cardigan program, so that's Make Wear Love. It's by Amy Herzog, and basically you do a swatch, you do all sorts of measurements to swatch, you take like 17, 18 measurements of your body, and then you plug in how do you want it to fit, what kind of style do you want your sweater to be, do you want it to be a jumper, do you want it to be a cardigan, what do you want? And it does all the math and comes out with a pattern that is perfect for your yarn, your gauge for that yarn, and then for you and for what you wanted, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, I did that. It fits very well. I'm very happy with it. I don't often wear it. I'm, I'm probably going to end up having to take it off today. It was cooler in the morning, but it's getting warmer and I just, uh, in the winter I wear it all the time, but I just can't do it right now. So. Um, let's get started with our works in progress segment slash on the go. So I've decided to rename my works in progress segment to on the go because I'm actually going to change it from being all my works in progress to just my yarny works in progress. So um, one of the, I do a lot of crafting and I've brought up some of that before on the podcast, but one of the things that I really love about knitting and crocheting, mostly knitting, is that it's more portable. And so these are projects that are on the go, literally, but also they're on the go. They're in progress, okay? So my first on the go pro project is one that I talked about last week, and that is the Plum Frost Cardigan. I'll add the picture again here in case you missed it from last week. Um, as of last week, I had done the swatch and I had done a bunch of math and realized that I needed more yarn. I also started the sleeve. I don't remember if I showed it, but I got about six or seven inches into the sleeve and my yarn came and it's the same colorway, but it is a different dye lot. That's actually a little, that's a little bit sharper of a contrast on the camera than it is in real life. And this is the lightest from the first dye lot and the darker one from the second dye lot. Um, but I realized I really do have to alternate skeins. I've never alternated skeins before and I 
hate it. I hate it. So I frogged the sleeve back to the cuff. Okay. And I started trying to alternate skeins. Now I have four skeins from the first dye lot and two from the second dye lot. So I thought, well, I mean, that's a, that's a third of my skeins from the second dye lot. So a third of my rows should be the second dye lot, right? So maybe I'll do two rows from the first one and then one from the second. And it's just not working. It's getting all jumpy and I don't even know if you can see this. Uh, not really, but basically the join where I'm doing the alternating with skeins is awful. It looks like a mess and I don't know, I've never alternated skeins before so I don't know if it would be easier if I was doing every other. I tried to do three skeins to do every other and that did not work. I couldn't keep track of them all. I couldn't figure out how I was doing this. So I don't know. I don't know what to do. Honestly, if anybody has any suggestions, please tell me because I have been so excited about this project for so long and it's wearing me down. At this point, I don't want to work on it. I don't want to think about it because I don't know what to do. It's awful and it's difficult and all I end up doing is frogging and trying something else and frogging and trying something else. And so if anyone please has ever been in that situation, please, please, please send me a message. Give me a suggestion. I. I'm open to anything here, you guys. I don't, I don't know what to do with this. Um, I'm hoping that by the end of the summer, I will have both sleeves done and I will have started on the body, but I don't know if that's gonna happen at this point, um, which means that it's very unlikely that I'm gonna finish it. And that's really disappointing to me because this is so important. So please, please, seriously, anything any suggestions <laughs> i'm open this is in my mama made waffles bag with the foxes on it which i love and i actually forgot to talk about this last time but one of the reasons that i got this bag is because my little cousin who's like three of my cousin's kids um is really obsessed with the song what is the what did the fox say and he loves foxes every time he sees foxes so I bought this bag shortly before vacation. I was trying to decide on a pattern and I saw this and I knew that he would love the bag and he smiled every time he saw it. So that was good. And the bag is great. I've used it for so many different things now. The project inside of it is in the naughty corner. <laughs> so that's my first on the go. Um, the second one is the Oktoberfest Socken. And my husband, uh, has really weirdly shaped feet. His heels are a lot bigger than the rest of his foot. And so he didn't realize this until I tried to knit socks for him and he suddenly realized what it felt like to have a sock that had fit your foot. Because his whole life all of his socks have been baggy and then tight on the heel. Not fun. So I love knitting him socks. Um, he doesn't wear sweaters, he doesn't wear scarves, he doesn't do any of that. And Socks are really one of the only things that I can knit him, so I do that a lot. The particular pattern that I picked has this cable down the side of it. And I'm using Knit Pick Stroll in the uh, brights in the Razzleberry colorway. He really loves neon, so this is the third pair of socks that I've made him in Knit Pick Stroll brights. Um, I made one in Snapdragon and one in Pickle Juice. Um, I have gone back and had to frog this multiple times because I cabled in the wrong direction. And I don't know what the deal is because I have already made a pair of these socks for myself in more of my own colors. Okay. And I didn't have any issues on the first sock. I started to have issues when I was doing the second sock and I got through the heel and then by then I started to have issues where I would just forget what I was doing or mess up or something. I don't know if maybe I got too comfortable with it. I made that pair of socks about six months ago. So I figured, hey, you know, why not? It's a, it's a basic pattern. It's something that I can sort of do on the go, but it does have a little bit of interest to it. And I was specifically looking for um, a pair of socks that I could make. I had my, my grandma visited this week. And so I was specifically looking for something I could work on while she was there and I didn't have to put all my focus into it and I didn't have a ton of works in progress. So, um, 
I've had to frog at least an inch of this maybe six times and it is extremely irritating. <laughs> um, but this is the first sock. I'm past the heel at this point. Usually his socks end up being about as long in the foot as they are in the cuff. So, you know, I'm probably about 75% of the way through. We'll see how it goes. Um, I am enjoying it and I have tried it on him. It does fit. As usual, the cuff uh, has trouble going over his heel, but that's because his heel is massive and then his ankles are skinny. Whatever. He'll enjoy them. So that's my second one and that is in my little sock bag, which I love. Um, this third one I actually started before the Oktoberfest socken, and that's the pattern by the way. And um, then I set it aside. And what happened is I saw this pattern on Ravelry. And those are the Farmer McGregor socks. And I had bought for Randall um, the Nerd Girl Yarns Bounce and Stop, Bounce and Stomp in the Serenity Firefly, Cl Firefly class, I can't talk today, colorway. And if you are into Firefly at all, you know that that's the name of the ship. Um, he introduced me to Firefly and we're both pretty nerdy people. And so as soon as I saw that this was a color and I knew that he loved bright colors and I know that orange is his favorite color. And so as soon as I saw this, I knew, I knew that I had to get it for him. And my brother actually also is into Firefly and he requested a pair of socks as well. So I did end up getting two skeins. If you remember, um, so sorry, I'll talk about that later. Um, so I started the sock and both of these, by the way, I'm doing in Addy Turbo 1.5s, US 1.5s, which are a little bit bigger than everybody else's 1.5s. Um, but we'll see how that goes. And the reason that I'm doing 1.5s is because before I did ones and they were too tight and then I tried some twos for him and they were a little bit loose. So I'm trying 1.5. Um, I started the cuff and I got through it and then I tried to figure out the pattern on my own. I tried to reverse engineer it and I just couldn't figure it out. I really couldn't. Um, so I ordered the book and the reason that I ordered, this is the Soctopus book and that's uh, one of my acquisitions for this week. Um, the reason that I ordered the book is because it, it has a bunch of sock patterns in it and at least half of them are ones that will be good for Randall. Um, and I have very special criteria for what I do for him because his feet are so strangely shaped. So they have to be stretchy but also elastic and etc etc etc. They have to come in men's sizes. Um, and I thought this one would be really good because it would have some pull but I would hopefully still be able to get it over his heel. So I cast these on, I couldn't figure out the pattern, my grandma was coming the next day, I ordered the book off of Amazon and then I set them aside and went I have to cast on something else because I need something for my grandma, well my grandma's here. So these have been sort of languishing since then and that's when I cast on the Oktoberfest sock in. I will probably come back to these as soon as I finish that first Oktoberfest sock. And then the final work in progress that I have for this week is my stained glass blanket, which I showed you guys last week. Here it is. So as of last week, I had these three squares done. Okay. And then I was working on that one. And I've made a ton of progress. There are a lot of ends that I haven't woven in. And the reason for that is because I wanted to complete the corner before I wove in the ends. So if you can see, this is the only place where I've gone up to the next row. And that's also the only place where I've woven in the ends. Um, as I said last week, I'm knitting these squares as standalone squares, the ones that are on the bottom. And then once I have two standalone squares, I'll knit the one between. And I do that one by picking up stitches. So. If this is a little bit of a different construction. A lot of people when they do their blankets, they'll start with one and go sideways and then go up and sideways. But I'm doing mine sort of at an angle like that. And I'm kind of doing that on purpose because I think it creates a really cool effect. Um, I also really, really love the decision to do the black for the first garter row. I was putting off and putting off and putting off doing a scrap blanket because I obsess way too much about the colors. 
And doing this has helped so much because there's this sort of overall, it sort of ties it together in a way that I think if I had just had the colors, it wouldn't. Um, so as of last week, I had these last episode, I had these three done and I was working on this one, which is Tipsy Sheep White Russian in their sock yarn. So I finished that one. And then the next one that I did was the Knit Pick Stroll Pickle Juice. And this is one of those neon sort of highlighter ones that I made for my husband. Um, and then I did a black squirrel one. And one of my friends is opening a fabric and yarn shop um, called the Black Squirrel. And so this was one of the rewards for the Kickstarter. This is like her color theme. Um, then I did Plucky Feet in Old Money. And I actually have not made anything out of this. I basically just bought it. It was a remnant that I got from somebody on Ravelry. Um, and I bought it to make a swatch for something else. So when I did that one, I put this one next to these three that were already done and added it here. And then the next one that I did was this ruddy orange one. So again, I put it this one next to this one and added it here. And this is Lion Brand Sock Ease in the colorway Red Hots. Um, this is from when I first started knitting socks. It is not a great sock yarn. It's not very soft. But you know, I had some left over so I threw it in. Then the next one that I did was Knit Pick Stroll in Poppy Fields. And that's this yellow one. I used that one for a pair of socks for myself. And as you can tell, I put the black scroll one here and I added it. And then at that point I had these five on the bottom and these four on the, t on the second row. And then I wanted to add another row. So I did Knit Pick Stroll Blue Violet here. And this is one that I used to make a shawl for one of my bridesmaids, well, one of my best friends who should have been my bridesmaid. And then I also used it for a pair of socks that I haven't decided if it's going to be for me or if it's going to go to somebody for Christmas. Um, and then after I did that, I was able to weave in the ends on the back because this corner was completed. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with how this is coming out. And I'm reaching the point where I'm running out of mini skeins to use. So we'll see how that goes. Moving on, I'm just going to quickly add my finished object segment here. Um, I'm calling this one off the go as opposed to on the go, if you add it. Um, the reason I'm quickly adding it here is because I don't have any finished objects this week. I have really lost my knitting mojo. And I think maybe it's because of that sweater and all the other Christmas gifts that I feel like I'm obligated to make because I have a time limit for them. But I really have had so much trouble getting down sitting down and making myself knit and getting anything done this week. So I don't have any finished objects. Um, by next time I podcast, I want to have something done. I don't care what it is. I want something done. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, in the meantime, let's move on to on the table. All right. So I've decided to move all of my sewing projects to their own segment because I felt like it didn't really make a ton of sense to include them with my works in progress or my finished objects. So that is what I'm calling on the table. And the reason I'm calling it that is because I have a table attachment for my sewing machine that's, you know, maybe this big-ish. And it comes in and it makes the table of the sewing machine a lot bigger. So these are things that are on my table. And first off is um, one of the baby blankets that I'm making for one of my cousins who had a baby and I have cut almost all the pieces out. This is from a jelly roll. So this is one of the ones that I've been working on and there's two different types of blocks in the quilt and you make, well, I, I adapted the pattern to be bigger. So I'm making 16 of one and 25 of the other. And so, um, block A, which is the one that I'm doing 16 of includes four of these and you sort of put them in a spiral. So I organized them all because it's a jelly roll. I wanted it to be a little bit more random. So I figured out exactly which teals I wanted with which pinks, with which navies, with which blues, right? Um, and so I have them string pieced like this in chunks of four so that I remember which ones go with which block. So 
I've got that done. I've got all of the A blocks put in these chunks of four. I think I have one of them that I put it into two, so I so it seemed two of these and seemed two of them, but I haven't finished any of them yet. I also have all of the block B cut out, and I have, so there's basically four color segments, okay? There's like a pink or a peach, a lime or, or like a mint, a light blue and a dark blue. So I have the light blue and dark blue parts seamed for block B. And I have the pink and mint categorized and sorted into various things, but I haven't seen them together yet. So obviously I haven't seen those two chunks together either. Um, I'm hoping by next time I will have all of the block A's done and I will have started on block B. But that's uh, one of my sewing things that's going on right now. The other one is the dress that I already showed you the fabric for where I wanted one side to be the books and one side to be the words. And I'm using this pattern, okay? And I'm gonna make it double-sided, right? And because it's a wrap dress, that'll help a lot because you can't really zip a double-sided dress because zippers only go one way. <laughs> um, I'm currently taking a class uh, called Sewing Beginning to Advanced. And some of my friends from my knitting group are in this class and I probably wouldn't have taken it if they hadn't been in it, but it's gonna be really fun to do it with people that I know. I had my first class this week, which I'll talk about a little bit in Prattle, but um, I brought this pattern and it's been incredible just to have someone there to tell me how to align the fabric, how to adapt the pattern to be double-sided, how to figure all of that out. So that's been really wonderful. Um, and that's what I'm working on in the class. So you will probably not see this finished for, for a while because the class is five weeks long and that's what I'm gonna be working on there. So it's not like I'm working on it while I'm at home. So that is what's on my table and let's get ready to move on. All right, so the next segment I'm calling what's on my frame and that is about stitching on the frame. And a lot of people have been talking about the stitching revolution that's been going on where people have been bringing out cross-stitching and embroidery again. Well, apparently this started about a year and a half ago and I had no idea about it. But as it turns out, that's actually about the time, I think it was March or April of 2015 that I decided I wanted to get back into cross-stitching. So apparently I've been participating and I had no idea. Um, so I got about five patterns at that point and I got all of the supplies for them. And these are big patterns, like not, I mean, not physically big, but intensive patterns. So I got a set of four patterns by Teresa Wensler based on the seasons. And she did hers, she made autumn first and then winter, spring, summer. And they get progressively more complex as she went. I didn't realize that and I started with summer which is the most complex so here's summer okay and it has beading in the border these are ribbon flowers um, and then this scene down here is all over one stitching so this is an incredibly incredibly complex pattern I finished this at the very end of last summer and my original goal had been to do summer and autumn in 2015 and then winter and spring in 2016. And I started this in, in March or April, right when I got the supplies. Um, so there it is, I really love it. My autumn one I finished, I technically finished it January 1st, but I still put 2015 on the date because I'd already stitched the date by that point. Here it is, it is the least complex of them. Now remember because you know, I, I messed up. <laughs> um, but it still has, this is all over one stitching and it still has beading. Um, I really like it. So now I'm working on winter and I set it aside. I started it probably in January and then I set it aside and I hadn't worked on it since. And this past week while my grandma was visiting, I just got the urge to work on it. So I did. And before this week, I had done, you can see there's eyelets here, little white eyelets. 
So I had done about half of the little white eyelets on this side, as well as this top medallion. And so this week, I finished the little white eyelets on this side. I can't see, okay. I did all of the details in between the poinsettias and the snowflakes. And I finished this medallion, I added all the sparkly thread. I did the same thing on the other side. And then in the center, I started um, some stitching in the satin thread, which is the colored one with the multicolors. And I did the snowflakes that are going to surround the word winter. So then I paused. I kind of had enough of that. I still haven't added all of the beads that are going to be in the border, and I obviously haven't done the top border sections. Um, but this is the second most complex one in her designs. I hopefully will finish this before the summer is over so that I can do the spring one before the end of the year, but I don't know if I'm going to make it just because I have so many things that I have to do for Christmas. Um, and I already talked about how I'm feeling a little bit burnt out on those, so I might use this as an excuse, but we'll see. So that's what's been on my frame. I will keep you posted on this. And now, let's move on. All right, um, the next section is mail call. And I do wanna give you a little bit of context for why I call it mail call. Um, I used to work at a summer camp and it was a sleepover camp and one of the only ways that you had really contact with other people was through mail. And you would get the mail right after lunch every day. And in New York State, um, sleepover camps are required to have one hour of quiet time. So essentially it's supposed to be a nap. Um, but the way that it works is you obviously can't force kids to nap, especially if they're, you know, 12. So what you do is everybody goes back to their cabin and you have quiet hour. And during quiet hour, you st have to stay in your bunk. You can sit up if you want, but you have to be absolutely silent. You cannot pass notes or talk to people. Totally silent. You can read a book, you can draw, you can knit. I had some knitting campers. Um, you can write letters. And so what would happen is immediately after lunch, you would get all of your mail and then you would go back to your cabin and have quiet time. And that's when everybody would read their letters and write responses. And I was there all summer and people would write me letters. All my best friends would write letters. And it was the best part of the day when the mail came in, when there was a mail call. So I often get the same sort of excitement every time I get something in the mail, even though now I can just pick up a phone and call somebody. Um, but yeah, that's why I call it mail call because it's so exciting for me. And I also include in that segment other things that I've gotten even if they didn't come in the mail. Um, just because I do tend to get that excitement from yarn too or other supplies no matter where or how I get them. So anyway, last time I talked about how I got a pretty decent amount of stuff over vacation and I was going to sort of spread it out. Um, before we get into those, I do want to quickly acknowledge two things that I already talked about, which is this pattern which I got at Joanne Fabrics. It's Simplicity 8085. It's a basic pattern. While I was at Joanne Fabrics, I also got another pattern, which I swear I brought over here. Here it is. Um, this is another dress pattern. It's Vogue. It's Vogue 8895. And I wasn't sure if I was gonna do this one instead, um, but I think I'm gonna make this brown version with like a very lightweight sort of linen drapey fabric for the summer, which will be pretty nice. Uh, the third thing that I already talked to you about was the Socktacular book. I haven't gotten too much into it yet, uh, be mostly because I did put those socks aside. Um, but it's a good book. I briefly looked at the patterns. They all seem very well written. Now, back to things that I got on vacation. Um, I'm going to just focus on things that I got at one particular store today. And that was Twisted, which is a yarn store in Portland. And while I was at Twisted, I got Sueno Kiku yarn. And this is a DK weight yarn. It's brown. And it's a different brown than the one that I'm already wearing. But it is going to be a cardigan. I got five skeins of it. 
and it's 85% merino and I'm sorry, 80% merino and 20% bamboo, which is very exciting. I don't think I've ever worked with bamboo before. I'm gonna make the campsite cardigan, I think. So I originally bought this for the campsite cardi. I loved it. I thought it would work great for actually camping, um, which I do quite a bit of. And I liked that there was this bamboo. It felt like, you know, it's something I can throw on in the cool evenings, but it's not like wool that would be really terrible by a campfire, right? But here's the thing, the campside cardi doesn't meet in the middle, and I want something that meets in the middle. So I don't know if I'm going to adapt the cardigan. I don't know if I'm going to try and find another pattern. Um, feelers out for that. I'm gonna put a picture of campside cardi right here. And if you know of anybody that's adapted it, or if you know of another pattern I could use, please, please let me know. Um, yeah, but I really do like this yarn. I bought five skeins. I'm hoping that's enough. It's an exactly enough for when the pattern calls for the size larger than mine. Um, but again, as usual, my gauge is a little bit smaller. And if I do adapt it, we'll see. We'll see. I'm not going to make it as long as the pattern, though. Probably just wider in the front and then not as long because I have a short torso. <laughs> but yeah, so I love this yarn. Um, Twisted was a really wonderful store. And while I was there, I also got a shawl pin. And this is the first shawl pin that I've ever actually had. And I used it quite a bit to hold up my um, Gallifrey Sunset shawl that I showed you guys last time. Um, and I, I really love this shawl pin. I'm very glad that I got it and I find it incredibly useful. So that is mail call for this episode. Um, from here on out, it's just gonna be talking about knit-alongs and prattle, which is where I talk about my life. So if you don't wanna hear about that stuff, have a great day. I'm so thrilled that you came to watch my podcast and listen to me platter on about things. And um, I'm, I'm really honored. So give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you wanna know when I update. Um, I do tend to upload every other Monday but that's not a guarantee. So yeah, thank you so much for coming and have a great day. All right, if you're still here, we're gonna move on to knit alongs. And as you know, there are the two main ones that I'm gonna talk about right now, which is 50 points for Gryffindor from KT of Inside Number 23 and the Glasgow Subway knit along from Eva of Eva Christie Hand Knitting. So I'm just gonna jump right in. I'm not gonna bother explaining them all again. 50 points for Gryffindor. As of last week, or last episode, excuse me, I keep saying last week. Um, I was at negative 103 points. <laughs> Since then, I have gotten all the way down to negative 90, and then I did go back up to negative 100, and I'll talk about that. So basically, all of my squares for my blanket each counted as one or two points, depending on how old the yarn was. So that brought me down to negative 90 because I finished a lot of squares. And then in the mail, I got the yarn of the second dye lot for the Plum Frost cardigan. And that again was the Miss Babs Yummy Two Ply yarn. Um, so I got the extra two skeins of that in the mail. And of course, I mean, that's not quite the same thing as me just splurging on some yarn. I did need it to do what I was doing, but it did bring me down by 10 points. So I went back down to 100. So my net gain from the past two weeks is 30 points, <laughs> which is a little bit ridiculous. <laughs> and I wonder sometimes if maybe this is part of why I've had zero knitting mojo because I'm making myself feel so guilty for it and obsessed that I have to do it quickly in order to finish by the end of the year. But at the same time, what this is doing is gamifying knitting for me and I love that. I love gamifying things. And so, I don't know, we'll see. I'm going to finish it out for this year and I'm hoping that my knitting mojo comes back maybe when I get some sewing or some cross stitch done that I just kind of need to take a break from that. But I don't know. We'll we'll see. So the other one, of course, is the Glasgow Subway Knit Along by Eva of Eva Christie Hand Knitting. And the way that this one works is you virtually knit around the Glasgow Subway system. Um in meters. Okay, so last time that I talked, I was at Ebrock Station, 
Um, and in order to get to Ebrox, you had to have 1,145 meters of yarn, 1145. And I had gotten to 1578. Um, since then, I have gone up to 1702. So that is another 124 meters, which is not a ton. Basically, everything that's included here is all my squares for my blanket. And that's, yeah, that's it. Just the squares for my blanket. I have not included any work that I've done on the sleeve of the cardigan or either of the pairs of socks. I find that it's way too much brain power to try and calculate all of that while it's still on the needles. So what I'm going to do is for the sake of 50 points for Gryffindor, I add things in when they're completed. I'm not going to do it otherwise. For the sake of the Glasgow subway knit along, for things like socks, if I get one done, I will put that sock. Then when I finish the second sock, I'll put the second sock. Because that's, I think, a little bit more accurate. Even though I haven't really finished the project, it's going to give me a chance to weigh it and add it in um, ahead of time so that I don't... Because what I tend to do is finish several things at once. I mean, <laughs> last episode is kind of evidenced of that. And so if I don't add in the socks until I finish them, I'm going to have four socks on the go and then finish them all in the same week and jump three stations. <laughs> so I feel like doing it this way would be a little bit more accurate. So that's where I am with knit alongs. I have a couple of other knit alongs sort of in the works and I'm really excited to, the, to do the Ravelenic Games, which is basically the Ravelry version of the Olympics. So that'll be at the beginning of August. But for now, that's all I've got to say. So moving on to Prattle. And Prattle is where I'm gonna talk about just, you know, my life in general. Um, last week, or oh my goodness, last episode I talked about how we took our kitty Bodhi to the vet. He did not forgive us. That night, um, we tried to give him medication and we did not see him again for another four days. Um, and, and I really mean we did not see him. I think once I was asleep and I woke up and happened to notice him walking out the door to go get food. I mean, it was like he didn't even exist and we would just wake up in the morning and there would be food gone and the litter box would be full. He didn't come out from the bed during the day at all. And at the same time, my grandma came, so I don't know if maybe that was it. She arrived on Friday. So he, for about a week, we really didn't see him didn't see him at all. Then on Friday, my grandma came and he freaked out. I mean, he just stayed where he was. I was starting to get really worried about him because at this point it was a week and a half and he hadn't come out from under the bed. And at one point it was a really hot day and I actually took a bowl of water and put it under the bed. And I mean, he drank all of it, but I was just so worried about him because he wouldn't come out to eat. He wouldn't come out to drink water. And I didn't want him to get sick again and have to go to the vet again. So around that time, I did some research and I found Fellaway, which is a, essentially a cat hormone, I don't know, cat hormone, like it's like a plug-in scented cat hormone, okay? So I ordered some, I can't smell it, first of all, but I ordered some on Amazon and we plugged it in on Tuesday night of this past week. And that Wednesday morning, my grandma left. And Tuesday night, he stopped freaking out. I mean, up until then, it was like if he left from under the bed to go get food, which he, he had started doing a little bit during the day, like once maybe. So if he left to go get food, and then when he came back, I happened to be like sitting on the floor somewhere, he would panic and run past me. And after we plugged the fellow away in, he sort of calmed down and he would walk past he would still look at you very warily, but he would walk past. So then that night he came up on the bed for about 10 minutes in the middle of the night. The next morning my grandma left. And after that he came up on the bed again a little bit later. And from then on out, it's just been, he's been consistently on the bed more and more. In the past two nights, he's been back to his usual self. He'll be up on the bed at eight o'clock. And if he sees you walk by, he'll meow, come, come pet me. And 
and he'll just lie there and wait for you and then purr and flop all over you and he does this thing where if you stop petting him he like pulls himself along the bed with his legs and then flops his head in your hands so please pet me more um he's adorable he's such a snuggle bug so i'm really glad that he's sort of back to himself and i don't know if it's because grandma left i don't know if it's because of the fell away or a combination but i'm so happy so of course my grandma did come to visit um we basically she's really into genealogy and like figuring out family history so i have a lot of sort of i guess family lore from the other side of my family and I basically figured well she's really into it and I know she'll enjoy doing it with me so we spent a lot of the time that she was here researching the other side of my family and finding out you know there's this person in my family that I've been hearing about oh so and so from 200 years ago but I have no idea how I'm actually related to them other than my grandfather talks about them so just doing sort of the research and connecting all of the stories that I had heard as a kid to real people was kind of cool. Um, as I said, I started that class. It's a Thursday night class. It started last week and I have really, really, really been enjoying it. Um, it's taking me a lot longer to sew a dress than it usually does. It's three hours a night and I didn't even get to cut out fabric. <laughs> <laughs> um, in this past class but the reason it's taking me so long is because I'm doing it right and I feel like a lot of it my sewing has been self-taught and if you were to look on the inside of any garments that I've sewed you would be horrified <laughs> and I feel like I'm gonna be able to go so much farther once I know how to do it correctly and I'm gonna be able to expand my repertoire of what I can do so I'm really excited for that and I don't usually take a ton of classes. I don't like to sort of go back and do the basics a whole lot, but I feel like in knitting, if you mess up, you can just frog it. But in sewing, you can't really do that. And so I've been kind of afraid to do a lot of sewing um, if I didn't know what I was doing, especially if the fabric was more expensive. So I'm really, I'm really happy to be taking this class. And I'm glad that my friends signed up for it because I, I wouldn't have done it otherwise. Um, this past weekend, my aunt and uncle came to the area to visit some other family members of theirs. And it was a quick, I mean, it was like in and out for the weekend. They were flying through on their way back from somewhere else. So on Sunday, the whole family, everybody that was involved, um, went for a hike. And that was a lot of fun. This was yesterday um, and is why I didn't record yesterday. So we hiked six miles with like 1,300 Foot incline something like that it was so much fun and there was a lot of rock climbing and bouldering and we found this really cool cave where we went up this rock and across the top of the rock and I mean it was a huge it was like a sheer cliff on the other side and we were like freaking out well, I was freaking out I don't know about my cousins and my aunt and uncle but we went across and it was one of those things where it wasn't like I'm gonna die at this moment but it was if I mess up or trip I really could die um, so, you know, you just have to be aware. And then down the side, there was sort of like a slant. And one of my cousins went down the slant. He goes, you guys, there's a cave down here. So we went down the side and lo and behold, there was just a hole in the rock. And you went in and this was the side that was less dangerous. I mean, it was still like a 50 foot fall, but it wasn't like a 300, 400 foot fall. <laughs> Um, so we went into this cave and it was just like a bowl had been cut out of the side of this rock that was jutting up. And on the other side, on the more dangerous side, there was a, a hole that was, you know, maybe a foot and a half tall by four feet wide. And it was vertical. So there was like flat ground going up to it. So you could crawl in and stick your head out of this 400 foot cliff. <laughs> So it was actually really cool. We got some pictures of me sticking my head out of cliff with my cousins and whatever, various pictures. But you could stick your head out of the cliff and my aunt's standing up there with the camera and she's taking pictures of us. It was really cool. I really had a lot of fun. So then we went on from that, finished the hike. There was a couple other places that we climbed some rocks, found some cool caves. Um, but it was really, really enjoyable. And I've also been doing a lot of reading these past two weeks. 
So I finished Jane Eyre. It was the first time I had read Jane Eyre. I've seen the movie a few times because my mom is very, very into Jane Eyre. But I enjoyed reading the book. And I also read Daughters of the Dust, which is a book about, um, there's a, a place in, in South Carolina in sort of like past the Outer Banks of North Carolina where it's islands. And way back when we used to have slavery, rich plantation owners would who owned the islands would have all these slaves out there and then just they they lived out there in their houses they built their own community and the owners weren't present and so they came up with their own very unique culture that sort of developed over time and so it was an absolutely fascinating read about you know a cousin who was going back to the island to visit her family and do an ethnographic study on them who'd been living in New York and whose grandmother grew up in, you know, it was just, it was fascinating. And, and um, I really, really enjoyed the read. I absolutely would suggest it. And I don't remember the author off the top of my head, but I'll put it in the show notes. Um, yeah, so that's what I've been up to for the past two weeks. I'm not sure exactly when I'm gonna podcast again. Again, probably in two weeks. Um, Sundays are usually a pretty good day for me to record, but not always. Um, hopefully I'll get this uploaded today, but otherwise I will see you soon. I hope you enjoyed it and subscribe like if you did and I will see you guys soon. Have a fantastic day. Bye.